Hey you guys, today we're gonna talk about multiplying polynomials. To multiply polynomials, all you gotta do is use the distributive property. Um, it can be used to multiply any two polynomials. So if you have more than two, you'll have to do two and then multiply your product times the other one. Um, you have to distribute each term in the first polynomial to each term in the second polynomial. You may need to apply the distributive, whoops, sorry. You may need to apply the distributive property several times. Be sure to combine like terms after you've distributed. And here's where some people uh, distribute and they write their terms um, horizontally. Some people distribute and then they stack them on top of each other to line up like terms. I like to do that if the polynomials are really large. Um, of course, if possible, you want to write your answer in standard form. And just be careful with your signs, your negative, negative, positive, negative, that kind of thing. Now, if you are multiplying two binomials, you can use the full method, which full stands for first, outer, inner, last. So here's an example. These are your first two, outer, inner, last. But basically, you're just using the distributive property, right? Distribute the x to this, distribute the x to this, distribute the 3 to this, distribute the 3 to this. But it's just a little catchy way to remember, and it kind of helps when you factor, because when you factor, it's like doing the full method backwards. So full, first, outer, inner, last. So uh, let's just go ahead and do this one while it's in front of our face. So x times x would be x squared x times negative 2 would be negative 2x. Now the x has been distributed to both of these, so it's the 3 term. 3's term, 3 times x is positive 3x. And 3 times negative 2 would be negative 6. You could combine these two terms, so that would be x squared plus uh, 3x minus 2x would be 1x. Whoopsies. There we go, my bad. So just x, we don't need to put the 1, and then minus 6. Okay? All right, let's do some big boy examples. Or big girl. All right. So let's look at this one. So for this one, you're not per se multiplying polynomials. You're going to have to distribute the constant to both of these polynomials, and then you just want to combine like terms. So first, I'm going to distribute the negative 2. Negative 2 times 7x would be negative 14x. Negative 2 times positive 1 would be negative 2. Now, for this one, we're distributing a negative 5. So negative 5 times 3x squared would be negative 15x squared. And negative 5 times 3x would be negative 15x. Negative 5 times positive 2 would be negative 10. And then we want to combine like terms and hook our answer up to be in standard form. So look for the biggest exponent first. I have a negative 15x squared. Looking for other x squareds, and I don't have any. So I'm going to write that first, negative 15x squared. Then I'm just going to look for x. So here is negative 14x, negative 15x, same sign, add and keep. So that will be negative 29x. And then here is a constant. Here is a constant. Again, same sign, add and keep. So that would be negative 12. So booyah. Let's look at another one. All right, for this one, for the first thing we're going to do is distribute the x to all three of these terms. And when we're finished, we'll distribute the negative 3 to all three of these terms. And I'm actually going to line this one up vertically so you can see what that looks like. So x times x squared would be x cubed. x times 5x would be 5x squared. And then x times positive 5 would be positive 5x. Now that I've distributed the x to all three terms of the polynomial, I've got to distribute the negative 3. Negative 3 times x squared would be negative 3x squared. So I'm going to write that underneath the 5x squared. I'm going to actually zoom in a little bit here. All right. And then negative 3 times the positive 5x would be negative 15x, lining up my linear terms. And then negative 3 times positive 5 would be negative 15. And then we just add them up going straight down. So drop my x cubed. 5x squared minus 3x squared is positive 2x squared. 5x minus 15x is negative 10x. And then bring down to negative 15. 
Whoopsies. Too much zoom. <laughs> All right. Good. Let's do another one. All right. For this one, <laughs> it's a binomial and a binomial. So we could do the full method first out or in or last. There's a formula that goes with something like this. This is, um, do you see how that these are the same and these are the same and one is minus and one is plus? The formula is that a plus b times a minus b equals a squared minus b squared. So that would mean that multiplying this, I'm just going to end up with 9x squared minus 8 squared. So 81x squared minus 64. All right, so knowing this formula it can shorten the length of time it takes to do this, but you can still do the distributive property or the full method. So if you go back and just boil it or distribute, 9x times 9x would be 81x squared. 9x times 8 would be positive 72x. And now if we do the negative 8, that's our inner. Negative 8 times 9x would be negative 72x. And then negative 8 with 8 would be our last, which is negative 64. And see, you have positive 72x and negative 72x. Those cancel out, and you're left with 81x squared minus 64. So like I said, knowing this formula will help, especially when you start factoring, but it's not necessarily required to do, to do this. Okay? Let's look at another one. All right, for this one, you got a couple options. You could just distribute the 8 and then multiply, or you could do these and then multiply by 8. I think I'm going to go ahead and handle my business with these two, and then I'll just multiply everything by 8. So we got x plus 4 times x minus 5. So I'm going to do x times x is x squared. x times negative 5 would be negative 5x. 4 times x would be uh, positive 4x, and 4 times negative 5 will be negative 20. And then I can combine these two terms. Negative 5x plus 4x would be negative 1x, or just negative x minus 20. Now, don't forget your 8 up here, so we're going to multiply everything by 8 or distribute the 8. 8 times x squared is 8x squared. 8 times negative x is negative 8x, and then 8 times negative 20 would be negative 160. Stuff's pretty easy, right? All right, let's look at this one. All right, before I go distributing all willy-nilly, I'm going to combine like terms because these are not as complicated as it seems. Like, look, you can do parentheses first. I can put 6x minus 6x together. And what's 6x minus 6x? Uh, nothing, that's 0. And then 0 plus 8 is 8. So all of this ugliness is just 8. Let's look over here. What can I put together over here? 4 minus 7. What's 4 minus 7? Negative 3. So all this just turns out to I'm distributing an 8. 8 times 2x is 16x. 8 times negative 3 is negative 24. And I'm done. One more, okay? All right, so let's look at this one. This is another one that there is a formula for. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and give you both these formulas at one time. If you have a plus b squared, that's equal to a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. And then if it's subtraction, a minus b squared is equal to a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. Knowing these formulas, again, makes your life simpler. It helps when you start factoring, but is it required to do this particular lesson? Not necessarily. All right, if I use this formula, this is plus so I'm going to use the plus one. So this is my A, and this is my B. So I'm going to do A squared plus 2AB plus B squared. So A squared would be 4X squared plus 2 times A 
times b, which is 4x and 7, plus b squared would be 7 squared. So that would be 4x squared is 16x squared. Remember, you have to share that exponent with both those. Plus 2 times 4x is 8x. And 8x times 7 is 56x. And then 7 squared is 49. And that's it. Now, let's say you don't know these handy-dandy formulas. What you would have to do is when you have 4 x plus 7 squared is you would just have to write it twice. Squared means times itself, right? So that's 4x plus 7 times 4x plus 7. Then you distribute the 4x. 4x and 4x is 16x squared. 4x to 7 would be 28x. And then here, 7 times 4x would be 28x. And 7 times 7 is 49. Combine like terms. So you get 16x squared plus 56x plus 49. So both ways work. One is just a shortcut. And as I said previously, these formulas will help you when you factor. All right, have a fabulous rest of the day.